Hello and welcome to Saturday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where I've had two or three days in a row with slightly easier puzzles, um, which has been extremely enjoyable actually. Some of the puzzles have been fabulous, uh, but I think I'm getting my comeuppance today. I've been asked to have a go at Miami Zipper by Dorlier, Dorlier the maths professor, um, and apparently this one is brutal. <laughs> it's got five stars out of five for difficulty. Um, it's been recommended to us a couple of times very, very strongly by people we trust, um, and apparently it has a breathtaking break-in, whatever that means. Um, we've got two given digits, and these are zipper lines, obviously. I don't know why it's called Miami Zipper. Um, hmm. I'm trying to think by the way this uh, Miami Dolphins that's a thing isn't it is this some symbol related to the Miami, Miami Dolphins I don't know uh, I, I will rely on chat to explain the meaning of, of the title um, but and I'll read the rules in a moment or two's time but there's there's literally only two sentences of rules because it's just zipper lines and normal Sudoku um, and I don't have much news for you today as, as usual an appeal if you do enjoy the channel um, please subscribe it's free to do that please support us on Patreon where we have loads and loads of bonus extra content we did hear your we did hear you um, it does seem that there is an appetite to watch a three and a half hour Sudoku video region geometry. So um, at some point I will put that up probably on <laughs> over on Patreon um, and we'll gauge the response from there about what happens to it after that. Um, but but just an appeal as well, do have a look at region geometry by Emre Kolotoglu. Um, it is a very, very hard puzzle, but it uh, actually might be a good one to think about in the context of this one. If I can solve this one and this becomes a video, and if you enjoy if you enjoy the logic in this one and, and if you manage to solve it yourself, then region geometry is probably going to be right up your street. Um, what else do I need to mention? So patron, oh, birthdays. Let's do some birthdays. I've got four birthdays to do today. Brian, it's your birthday. You construct under the name Blackjack Fitz, I know that. Um, and your wife Sarah wrote to us and said that Sarah and Nicholas um, love you very much and would like to wish you a happy birthday. And I will add my uh, my birthday wishes to those as well. Um, I, I did actually look, look up whether we'd had any recommendations uh, for Blackjack Fitz puzzles. And we have had one um, and it's with the testers at the moment and it's called it was a funny it was a reversal of killer is it relic it was a relic puzzle um so anyway brian maybe 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 there might be a belated birthday present at some point um let's keep our fingers crossed um and i hope you have chocolate cake today obviously uh next jess it's your over there in perth australia um your boyfriend Josh wrote to us and said that you'd appreciate a shout out. Apparently you love the cryptic crosswords um, and Josh prefers the numbers. But Jess, I hope you have a great birthday today with chocolate cake, obviously. I suppose you might be getting this message a day late because, because of time differences and I apologise if that's so. Um, also visiting Oz at the moment is Jeff. Um, Jeff, I know you're there for the first time with your partner and I know this because your friend Lucy wrote to us uh, and apparently you're responsible for getting Lucy into cracking the cryptic so she wanted to thank you and get you a shout out. So Jeff, many happy returns. I hope you see the video approximately on time and I hope you have chocolate cake, obviously. And then finally, in uh, is it Langham in Sweden? I'm probably saying that wrong. I apologise if so. But Johanna, it's your birthday and you've turned 32. And I know this because your partner Jonas wrote to us. I think it's Jonas rather, or is it Jonas? I never know. I never know. I, I really, I really implore people. If I'm likely to get a pronunciation wrong, I probably will get it wrong. So please, please do tell me and give me some guidance. Um, but apparently, Johanna, it's become an evening ritual uh, where the two of you will watch an episode of Cracking the Cryptic with a cup of tea. How civilized. And um, Jonas. Um, probably Jonas, uh, said that you are, you are improving at a frankly frightening rate, uh, which is fantastic to hear. And he loves you very much and feels so lucky to have you in his life, which is, a, I hope, a nice message to get on your birthday. Many happy returns. That is all the birthdays done and dusted. Let us turn our attention to Miami Zipper 
and see what the great Dorlier has in store for us. These are the rules. Normal Sudoku rules apply. So that means we've got to put the digits one to nine once each in every row. In ah, Lost my army. In every column and in every three by three box. And then digits an equal distance from the center of a purple line must sum to the digit in the center of that purple line. So let's look at this one. Um, so let's make that uh, an eight. If that's an eight, then these two squares have to add up to eight because they're an equal distance from this center point. Uh, these two digits have to add up to eight. These two digits have to add up to eight. These two digits have to add up to eight. And guess what? Those two digits have to add up to seven. No, they don't. They also have to add up to eight. Um, so I shouldn't make jokes about the rules, should I? But that, that's how these, these zipper lines work. Uh, and that is all the rules. So do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. But now I get to play. Let's get cracking. Now, I say let's get cracking. Mean, do I pencil mark some threes up there? I suppose I do. And do we know? It's going to be one of these zippers, I would imagine, is where we start. Although, hmm. Well, actually an awful lot of real estate in box two is is consumed by zippers so what do i know about zippers i'm just trying to think about i haven't thought about zippers at all before i turned on the webcam which is probably silly of me um but zippers have the quality that you can't put nine anywhere on a zipper except in the middle um because because if you do let's say you tried to make that square a nine then you would add nine to this square in order to arrive at the value in the center. And obviously the value in the center cannot be greater than nine because this is a Sudoku. So nine, nine in box two is definitely in one of those squares. No, ooh, I was about to say, where's nine in row four? But I mean, it is in, it's only got three positions. Nine in column three has only got three positions. nine in box nine is nearly restricted that's quite interesting if that was a nine in the corner where would you then put nine in column seven you'd have to put it here because again it can't go on the on any zipper line other than in the middle of the line uh, okay where's nine in box four well, box four has a lot of real estate covered by purple lines. So nine is in one of two places, I think. Ah, I was going to ask where that digit went. That's quite, a, that feels like quite a good question. Where does that digit go in box four? Because it, it can't go on its own zipper line. Because obviously then the opposite cell on the zipper line would have to be a zero. Uh, and we can't put zero in the puzzle. So actually, uh, no, it's not quite as good as I thought. I wondered if we could get an overlap with the nine pencil mark there, which, which well, I suppose that could be nine, probably is nine. Um, but that digit could also go there. If that digit was forced there. It couldn't be nine then. Hmm. Okay, so sorry, I was going to uh, let me come back to my first thought, which is could we do something with this line? Because what I'm seeing here is that those six digits, which are all the digits on this zipper that aren't the middle digit, they all have to be different, don't they? So the minimum that these cells could add up to is if they're one, two, three, four, five, and six. Um, and that means this square must be at least equal to seven. <laughs> um, and we can do that in one of two ways. You can say that must be true because there is at least a six on the line. Or you could actually then divide the triangular number for six, which is 21, um, by three, which is how many different pairs of zipper pairs you've got on the line. And that will also give you seven at least into this square. So that is seven, eight or nine. Let's get rid of the blue highlighting. Now this one, hmm. 
<laughs> this one is very, very odd. Uh, I mean, I'm sure it can't be this, but could it be five? The only re... I mean, I'm sure that's not right, but obviously those digits... I mean, I could have a one, four pair here. I could have a two, three pair here. It's only just possible. But if I did, then I could have five in the middle. I'd, um, yeah, I mean, imagine this was a one, two, three, four, and this would be a one, two, three, four. That would be... Well, it would be... Very surprising, but maybe not impossible. Maybe not impossible. Although that would seem to put a lot of low digits on this thing. Um. Sorry, I am not. I'm not getting this at all yet, am I? Let me just. Uh, so we said that was at least five. I mean, that's such a dreadful pencil mark, honestly. That one, I know, was in one of those three cells. Um, well, maybe what we have to do Ah, hang on, one, two, three, four, five, six. I don't know, because there are a lot of pairs on this one, aren't there? That's um, Let's just highlight those and see how many there are. So these two join up. Obviously, the orange ones join up. Then the next one, uh, the problem is then you can start getting repeat digits, because these could be the same digit, uh, because they don't see each other through any sort of Sudoku mechanism. So there's a whole host of stuff going on there. Right, so we've got one, two... Three, four, is it six different colours? One, two, three, four, five, six, I think. So we're dividing the total of all these cells by six at least. Well, six exactly, in order to get to the value of this square. So those are at least 21. I don't know whether it's better to do it. Oh, actually, no, maybe we do it with row five because we've got a three here, which forces these to be at least one, two, four, five, six, which is 18. 18. And then another 10, 28. That might be able to be a one, I'm not sure. 29. And then another three is 32. So I think the minimum of all these squares is 32-ish. 32 divided by 6 is just over 5. So that suggests this is at least a 6. That's absolutely rubbish, isn't it? I mean, let's put that in. That is rubbish. Um... Sorry, this is appalling. I have I, I can't see what to do at all. I think this highlighting is throwing me off. I'm going to get rid of it. <laughs> Let's get rid of the colouring. I'm going to leave that one in. Is there... I'm really sorry about this. I'm not. I'm not actually. I don't even feel like my brain is working today. Um, because I can't. I can't see what to do at all here. I'm not even having any good thoughts, and I know I'm not. Um, that green digit is in one of those three. If that green digit was here, this would be pushed up a lot. If. Ah, ah, okay. Can we say something about nines? Nines are probably where we're meant to look, actually. Ah, yeah, okay. Maybe, maybe it's simpler. Where is nine in box five? Now, it can't be on a zipper, 
unless it's in the middle of a zipper. So nine only has, oh gosh, I didn't see this at all. Nine only has three positions in box nine. Right, so if that's a nine in box four, that is not a nine, definitely. And if that's a nine, if that's a nine, what does that mean? It may mean nothing. that's a nine. Oh, I can't. I think there's something going on with nines. I just can't quite see it. If that's a nine, that's a nine. And that's interesting, isn't it? At least then we know something about this big U line here. That would stop this being a nine as well. But if this is not a nine, then this is a nine. Then either this is a nine or one of these two is a nine. In which case there would have to be a nine in one of these cells by Sudoku. <laughs> oh, this is desperate, isn't it? Then there would be, then there would be a nine in one of those. I suppose, yeah, I mean, nine oh okay is it something to do with i'm suddenly realizing nine is restricted in boxes one and three and no it's not it's not restricted there it's not really restricted in box seven is it if that's nine do we do we get any Oh, yeah. Mm. Okay, if that's nine, then nine in box box one is in one of those squares. So let's think about that. If that's nine, there's a nine here, there's a nine here, and there's a nine here. But if that's not nine, then it's at least, well, we know it's at least six. It can't go on its own zipper then. But if, okay, but if it was six, no, actually, hang on, how would it be six in this box? The only way, no, it couldn't be, could it? Ah, that's a point, right. It's, ne it's never six for an obvious reason. It's never six because in box, um, in this box, there are one, two, three, four, five, six different digits. So even if one of those, if, if these were minimumed, these would be one, two, three, four, five, and six. So six would be on the zipper. So six can't be the center of the zipper. So this is now at least seven. Now, if this was seven, then in this box, where would you put, where would you put seven, eight, and nine? Because if this is seven, you can't put eight or nine on the zipper and you can't put seven on the zipper. So this would be a seven, eight, nine triple. And this digit would be quite a high digit because it would have a seven, eight or a nine. It would have to be a seven or an eight in this square. If this was eight, then in this box, well, then what? What if that's eight? Does that sort of change all of the all of the all of the geometric considerations? If this if this is eight, let's just have a think about this. Then eight eight mustn't be on this line, or this is already what I'm trying to do. By the way, I'm sorry if this is not clear. What I'm trying to do is to is to get clear in my head what the relationship is between this digit and this digit. And at the moment, I'm confident that if this is seven, this becomes whopping. This is at least eight or nine. I'm trying to do the same for eight here. I'm not maybe doing the best of jobs. If this is nine, we're in great shape. Because if this is nine, there's definitely a nine there in box box uh, one. That's nine in box four. So that's nine again. So the only question is, if this is eight, does that get pushed up for some reason or not? Now, 
if it's 8, either there's an 8 on the line up here, which would push this to be 9 again, or there's an 8 here, which would push 8 into one of these squares, but not to that one. So that if the 8's, to he if the eight's here, then obviously this would be 9 again. So the only way that this doesn't become whopping is if this is 8. Yeah, that's interesting. That still is good enough. This is very complicated. It's very complicated, but if this is 8, we either put 8 here, in which case this is 9, or we put 8 here, in which case 8 here means this is 9, 8 can never go there, or 8 here. But if 8 was here, where do we now put 8 in this box? Now, because we've made this 8, we can't put it on its own zipper. So it would be in one of these squares. And that means this is at least 8 again. So, so, so far, if this was 7, if this was 7, I'm just going to revisit that logic and check that I agree with myself about that. If, if this is 7, either 7 is on the line which is the lowest that could be on the line, because if this isn't seven, then this has to be eight or nine, because if this is seven, we can't put eight or nine on the zipper. So, okay, yeah, so that's definitely right. And then nine we've looked at. So this square is actually always eight or nine, Ah, which is... This square is at least seven. But these could still be the same, couldn't they? Hmm. <laughs> Have I actually advanced the course of human knowledge here at all? Perhaps not. This. Those two and those two are adding to give this. Okay. I mean, if I was setting this puzzle, there's no way if you were setting a puzzle like this, you'd start with this weird line here. You'd start with this line. That looks to me like, in fact, you'd start with this line and then you might start with these lines as well. Although these are weird, these two, because they're not symmetrical. So maybe you don't start with those lines. So I think Dorlea started with this line. I think this line is somehow doing something very important. Well, one thing I do, um, yeah, I mean, if that was eight, you've got to be a bit careful with this line with four, don't you? You can't put four on the line. Because four, if this is eight, you always have to put a four opposite a four if you put it on the line. So if that's eight, four is in one of those, is, is in both of these sort of struts, these I pentominoes. I don't know what that means. Probably nothing. If that's eight, nine is over here. Nine is in one of those. This would be nine. Ah, if that's nine, then nine in this box is over here and this isn't nine. What does that mean? There's something going on here, but I, I'm just not sure what it is. I think it's. I think it might be. There might be something clever we can do with nines. That's nine. That's nine. What on earth is going on here? This line, I don't think, let's just think about this line. This line is, we're adding up. 
Oh, okay, we can we can do the same trick here, can't we? Those digits all have to be different. So if I minimize them, they're one, two, three, four, and five. So there is a five at least on the on this line, which means that is at least a six in the corner. The six looks impossible to me to put there, but that might be wrong. And uh, well. Okay, now you can't put six in the corner, actually. Because if this was six, then the difficulty is the double three isn't available because of this gear. That's in that's interesting. Hmm, that's suspicious actually. Why is six being ruled out of this square? <laughs> it, because I think that's what this three is doing. Because because you could you can make six if you're using different numbers. There are two ways to do it: one five and two four. So this is all. So these would have to be one to, one five and two four in some order. But now, how do you do these two? What do you make this number now? It's got to be a number less than six, and it can't be one two four or five. So the only thing it can be is three, and it's not allowed to be because of this given three, which is also preventing this from being a double three pair. Yeah, and sorry, I suppose what we could have also said... It, no, you can't repeat three in the box, so don't be silly, Simon. Hmm, so, so this isn't six, anyway. So this is seven, eight, or nine now, which which means... Well, if it's nine, then there's a nine up here. Because, we, again, we can't put nine on this zipper. That becomes nine, that becomes nine that i mean it's really powerful that if this is nine that becomes nine that becomes nine that becomes nine there's a nine up here so this is not nine there's a nine in there exactly there this is weird and there's a nine exactly there this, this probably breaks i mean I, I wouldn't use this because it's 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 almost bifurcatory isn't it i'm using i'm using this uh, I'm using the power of Sven software to basically pinpoint the nines using these these blue outline cells, but it's incredibly powerful if that's nine. The problem is though, if this is not nine, then the effects are far more limited on, on these boxes up here, because if this is eight or seven, you can put eight or seven on this line. If this is, well, this, we know this is high, but I mean, you could put seven here with eight, or you could put eight here with nine, or you could put seven here with nine, I suppose. Yeah, I wonder. I actually wonder if this is a set puzzle, because I'm looking at this here. I'm wondering if there's something we can do. I'm just going to have a quick play around with that for a moment. Let's get rid of the blue in the corner. Um, something like this row as well. That's not going to work. Oh, I don't know. Let's just start with these two struts and put make those blue and those blue. Now that means, um, I'm not going to even explain what I'm doing here until um, until I've concluded whether this is total and utter gubbins or not. Uh, this is horrible actually. It, well, it is horrible. It is horrible because the, the problem with this is that I've got these floaty little... So, so what I was trying to do there was to form some sort of relationship between this U thing at the top and these U things down the edges. And the only reason I was really thinking about that was I was trying to think about how Dorlia had set the puzzle. Because this line just feels weird to me, frankly. I mean, if that is how this puzzle starts, maybe it was the dolphin idea. Oh, I don't know. I mean, it doesn't really look like a dolphin to me, so it looks... No. I just don't think this line would be how you'd start setting the puzzle. 
So I think it's to do with this line. And then just the way brains work, I think I think these lines look like they might follow from some sort of Sudoku related thing, especially as these digits then would be forced onto these lines. So so when I uh, let's just go back. So when I highlighted this with this column and this column we can say that orange is two sets of the digits one to nine because it's two complete columns and when I highlighted blue this is two complete boxes of the Sudoku so blue is also two com two sets of the digits one to nine and then I cancelled out the digits that were common between blue and orange and I know that there is exact equivalence now between what's left in orange and what we've got in blue which is very close to normal Sudoku we could have almost done that well, we could have done that really with just by thinking about it in Sudoku terms. But there's that with with zippers, you've also got the opportunity to. You know, we know we know that that string of digits there. Um, are four times X. What do, what do I mean by that? Well, let, let's say this value is X rather than eight or nine. just call it X. These two add up to x, these two add up to x, these two add up to x, and those two add up to x. So I know that's 4x. But I, can't, I don't think... I hate these. Because these, these have no overlap at all with... Well, they have no overlap at all with blue, and I can't see how to eliminate them from the um, from this sort of set idea. It almost looks to me actually like I'm meant to add add this row in to to orange as well, because then I'd have almost the whole no, because then these stick out. Yeah. Let me just, I'm just going to look at that anyway, sorry. So now those two are double count. Let's get rid of my green. Well, get rid of, I'm going to reinstate green there to tell me these two are double counted. So now, now there is a big difference. And now I have the opportunity to add another, another one to nine into blue because the sets are mismatched now because the total sum or the total contents of orange that we would have started with is three sets of the digits one to nine because I added this in and I'm counting these cells twice. Um, but now I've managed to get the whole of this line onto it. And in fact, if I count those twice, that's interesting. So this line now is one, two, three, four, and again, five, six, seven. It's a multiple of seven. Well, no, is that right? The, or that part of the orange set is a multiple of seven. Yeah, what you really want to do, what I really want to do is not have that in blue. And have that in blue instead <laughs> but performing that switch is not you'd have to have that row in oh that would that would knock off with that actually Now, if I did, oh, but then I, no, 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 because I need, no, because I want that to be in blue. And that's going to put that in blue. So I can't knock it off because it's actually counting the same way as the blue here. Yeah, sorry, just to show you what I meant there. I was thinking of that. I was thinking of adding that into blue as my equivalent of that. Um, no. this is not at all straightforward yes and but now I have got I have got both use in to the blue set completely but I've got some high this middle line is totally hybridized in a very very odd way uh, 
Um, oh no, I don't like this. I've got two lots. I've got two lots of nonsense. Oh, and I've got this in as well. Oh, this is horrible, actually. This is so horrible. I don't. I, uh, I, don't. I, 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 I wouldn't be surprised if there is something here. Because it feels like I'm skirting around um, a way of establishing a, re a relationship between the various pieces of this puzzle but this this line in the middle is so it's so difficult to understand what role it's playing if any in this i'm going to go i'm going to go back actually i don't uh, can, how can i highlight all the colors is it control a Let's just get rid of the colours. I'm going to go back to the pure version, that version. I think it's something to do with this, if it is set related at all. It's something to do with that. And, cut and cancel out those. And then the challenge is how you get... How you get this cell. So if you put that into, I think it must be into blue rather than into orange. And then you could, then I could get these three into orange. Yeah, so then you could orange all of those, but that, oh no, that's cancelling now. Oh, that's interesting. Hang on, let me just look at that. So then... Then all these cancel. Two, three. Oh, that's it. Holy moly. Good grief. Good grief. Right. Um, I better explain this then. Right. I now have got an equivalence that's working. That is weird. <laughs> it's absolutely. And it was. It was something to do with this line. But it, well, it, yeah, well, it is, it is, but in a, in a sort of, in an absolutely brutal way. And the, the my favourite bit about it is those are cancelling. Right, let me explain. Um, right, so look at the basic diagram now. Uh, in fact, we're going to know, we're going to have to go back. Um, I'm going to go back to here. I'm going to go back to here. So in this situation, we're way back where we were about 20 minutes ago. We've got um, we've got two sets of the digits 1 to 9 in orange and two sets of the digits 1 to 9 in blue. Now, so blue and orange are equal from a set perspective. They contain the same thing. Now, I was going to add that in to blow. That's a complete row of another complete row of the Sudoku. So blue now has three sets of the digits one to nine in. And I'm going to add this set into orange. So now I've got three sets of the digits one to nine in orange as, as well. So now orange and blue are still, the, they still contain the exact same sets of digits. And then you can think about, okay, well, what happens if we take that cell out of blue and orange? Well, we obviously don't know what's in this cell, but if you take that cell out of both, given that they had the same contents before you took this cell out and that cell, you know, that cell has been removed from both sets, what's left in both sets must still be the same. You just don't know what it is now because it was three sets of the digits one to nine and you, we don't know what the digit is here, but we know that we're just taking that cell's contents out of both sets. So we still have equivalents and we can do that for all of these cells that have two colors in them. So all of those disappear from both. And, and we can now say that what's left in orange is identical to what's left in blue. But here, watch this. Um, that cell it is equal mathematically to the sum of those two cells. So make this cell X. 
So these three squares together sum to 2x. Well, what's the sum of those four cells then? Those, these two cells also sum up to x. These two cells also sum up to x. So these four cells in orange sum to the exact same number that those three cells add up to. So imagine now at this point, we add up all of the cells in orange and we add up all the cells in blue. At this point, before we do any cancelling, obviously they are going to add to the same total because they're the same sets of digits. But if I now remove these digits or these cells from orange and those cells from blue, we, we can say, although the digits now left in blue um, are not the same digits as are left in orange because they have a different number of cells in both now, they still sum to the same because mathematically they must do. And now I'm just going to cancel those two cells. There, that I'm going to take that cell out of um, orange and that cell out of blue. And that's the same number coming out of both. So they still sum to the same number. And now I've got an, a, an exact equivalence between two, two near-U-shaped things in blue and a big U-shaped thing in orange. So now, now that's going to be useful, he says, trying to work out why it's useful. So this line, so orange can be one, two, three, four, five. Orange is a multiple of six. I'm just going to double check that one. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, orange is a multiple of six. Um, so six times six, lots of this digit is equal to four lots of this digit plus, <laughs> this is crazy. three lots of that digit. So let's make those, let's give those their own colors. I mean, this is, this is very hard actually still. I don't really understand how I meant to I don't know very much about this digit. This digit, I mean, the minimum we can put onto its line would be one, two, three, and four. So that is at least a five, I suppose. Um, so what, what have we got? We've got six lots of eight or six lots of nine. which is uh, 48 or 54 is equal to four lots of that digit, but that digit could be seven, eight or nine, uh, which is going to be 28, 32 or 36. And the diff okay, but the difference between that and that has to be a multiple of three from this one. So what do we say that was? Forty-eight or fifty-four minus. I'm, I'm going to do this one at a time. I, I can't think about this. I can't think of these things. I'm going to have to do it very slowly. <laughs> so I'm going to make this eight. If this is eight, then. This is 48. So we've got 48. Well, 48, 8 will not work with 7. I can tell you that. Because if that's 7, this line adds up to 28. And 48 minus 28 is 20, which is not divisible by 3. So that doesn't work. Um, but also, uh, it's, it's not going to work. The sort of modularity is wrong. That's uh, no, it does. Uh, hang on. No, it does work, doesn't it? If that is. 
I'm going mad. I think I'm going mad now. Sorry. I've gone mad. There's eight and eight definitely don't work either because that would be... That would be 32. This would be 48. That's 16 difference, not divisible by three. Um, but if this was nine, that would be 36. And that would be 12. And that would work. Um, this line would have to add up to 12. But that makes this a four, which it can't be. So that's weird. <laughs> so I, I think we might have got... Oh, this is our first digit. That's taking me 45 minutes. I think this is a 9. On the basis that 8 doesn't seem to pair up with any of, any of the numbers correctly. Let's make that 9. And see if we can find a combo that works. Now, if this is not... A 9 is the worst thing this could have been. Because there's no pressure on the row now. If nine had been over here, then uh, I thought there was a consequence of that. I now can't can't remember what it was. But let's think about this now. So this now is fifty four. If this is a seven, then we've got twenty eight. So we've got twenty. No, oh, that doesn't feel right at all. Is that twenty six? Yeah, 26 is not divisible by 3. I've got, a, I've got a feeling this is just... I've just done this wrong. Uh, 32 and 54 is 22. That doesn't work. And let me... Say, so if that's 36, 50, 18. Well, that does work because that could be a 6 then. Wow. Okay. Well, that's great because there's only one way it works. If that... Well, <laughs> if this is nine, I think we've proved it can't be eight. How did I get rid of seven from this line? Was that... It was something to do with this digit, wasn't it? I can't now remember how I did it. I think what I had did was a cycle through the option. I've got to trust that logic that gave me this. It's just very weird to me. There's only one way this... I suppose it's, it shouldn't be that surprising. But, I mean, this is incredibly complicated. I'm just going to have a think about whether this would work with 7. If that's 7, um, this would be 42. 42 minus 28 is 14. That's no good. 42 minus... And then, then everything's going to get too small over here, isn't it? So, yeah, it's only, it only ever works with, with 9 here anyway. 36, 42. Yeah, it's weird. So these both are 9. Um, and when you, when you put 7 or 8 here, it does work... But this digit becomes too small, unless this is 9. Only So this is always 9, and that has to be 9 in order to make this have an option that works. Uh, that, there's probably an obvious reason for that to do with, with maths. And if I wrote it down, I think I would see it straight away. But I can't, I can't see it straight away, as I'm trying to do it all in my head. Um, so we get 54 here. We knock 36 off that. That leaves 18 for this line, which is expressed as three times this digit which is therefore six so this is nine and we have three digits now not only that those squares are one two four and five of course because these have to be different ways of adding up to six um, and we can't use three because three would then repeat so actually ah this is great now i get nine look Where's 9 in this box? This is exactly what we were trying to look at before. 9 can't go on the line. And now 9 can't go on a line here. So 9 goes there by Sudoku. Now now 9 goes there by Sudoku. Ah, uh, see, this is a worry. This is a worry. Because this is exactly the sorts of things we were looking at before. 
but uh, no, hmm. some variation of that th this set thing I'm sure was important it's so beautiful I mean in fact it is so beautiful the way those threes cancelled out that felt that felt magical and also the way that cancelled out was magical yeah I, I I suspect that this is this is how the break-in works but there might well have been an easier way to see it. Um, no. Oh, well, yes. Okay. So now I've now I get nine, rid of nine from this one, because nine has to be over there in box one, which means this is not now nine. Nine is in nine is placed. In fact, nine can't go on a zipper and it can't go in its own row. Not. Oh, I thought I had a four. Oh almost had a heart failure then when I couldn't see where to put nine in here but that 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 is okay isn't it so now nine is there so nine is not in uh in this square anymore this these two are not nine. this is exactly what we looked at or it was something very close to this ages ago we could see how the nines would get plotted around the grid all right so what what now do we know uh, do we know the way to San Jose? <laughs> do we know the way to San Jose? Do, 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 do. Um, three. Where is three in this box? I don't know, but it's in one of those squares. So that is not three. So three is in one of these squares and it is opposite one, two, three, uh, one, two, one of those squares is either a four or a five, depending on what this is. Um, if this was seven, then these would be a seven eight pair and the world would break there we go that's that was easy <laughs> that's the first easy deduction we've had in the whole puzzle okay so what i said there was is this right if that's seven where is where is seven and eight in this box now well the seven can't go on its own line and eight definitely can't go on a line because minus one isn't isn't possible so this was a seven eight pair and you cannot you can't put seven and eight in this box anymore so that's actually that's a really straightforward thing this is an eight now we now we are going to have to be careful with four well or are we well four can't go in any of those squares now ah okay um, right there's a few things i can see here firstly where is eight in this box and again eight is in one of those squares now so eight is in one of these squares secondly if that's an eight that's a one uh, no, that's probably not a very clever thing to say thirdly these squares do see their partners don't they what do i mean by that well if we were to put four in any of those squares then another of these green squares would be a four because that square is being added to that one to get to that one. That square is being added to that one to get to that one. So four is not allowed to be in any of those. Three, five is not allowed to be in any of those. So the green squares are one, seven and two, six in some order, definitely. And that means that the rest of this row is filled with five, eight and four. That feels like it might do something. That can't be eight, obviously. So that's four or five. Um, and its equivalent on the line is there, which can't be a four, apparently. I mean, every deduction I'm getting here, uh, it can't be a four because there's a four on this line. Every deduction I'm sort of questioning in my brain, that's a seven now by Sudoku, so that's not seven. So its equivalent, which is that one, is not one. Right, what did we get? This 5 means these are not 5. That means these are not 1 by a process of the fact that the, the 5 and the 1 always pair up. In fact, we could probably notate that somehow. Let's 
Do we need to keep the the um, Do we need to keep this the highlighting now? We probably don't. I don't think. I'm going to get rid of it. Call me a call me a maverick. Um, yeah, because well, what I wanted to do actually was this sort of join these up like that. Those are pairs that add up to six. We can do the same over here. Look, that's a pair that adds up to nine. That's a pair that adds up to nine. And that's a pair that adds up to nine. Um, that's a pair that adds up to something that's not nine. But right, let's come back over here. What can we, what can we now do with this line thingy? We now know Ah, hang on. We now know one of these is three and it's adding up to eight. So there's a five opposite this line, which is one, two, th one, two, three, third and fourth, one, two. There is a five, uh, five in one of those positions. Okay, well that, that looks interesting for that square because that square now can't be five because one of those is five. That is deeply suspicious. It makes me think this is going to be an eight because this digit can't be six, seven, nine or five now. Can it be lower than that? Wow. OK, I, I don't know. It's the it, it may be is the answer, but it definitely can't be three by Sudoku and it can't be two because you can't put double one on the zipper. So this digit is really restricted. It's either four with a one th with a one three pair in exactly that order or or it's eight it cannot be five you couldn't put five for the, the five you need there uh, now if it's eight these two squares have many options although they don't have the option of being three five anymore because this square can be neither three nor five because of the given three so this would either be two six or one seven but that might oh, that does allow that to be a one now um Oh, there this is this is absolute nonsense um right let's go no i want to go back over here again let's think about this again um yeah the, the other thought i had was that seven in this box is now definitely on on the on the zipper thing because seven is in one of four places so there must be a one opposite these positions but there are quite well if the seven was in this domino this would be a one seven pair that would make that a two six pair and this a one seven pair but if the seven is up here with the three then we get a one in one of those two squares which would knock one out of this square Ah, ah, no, forget everything I've been talking about. Forget everything. I can get this digit or I can at least not uh, get this narrowed down by mathematics using a secret that I only share with my very favorite people. If you're still watching this video, you definitely deserve uh, to know the secret. The secret is that um, a complete box of a Sudoku, because of the rules of Sudoku, contains the digits one to nine once each. And those digits add up to 45. So this whole box adds up to 45. But look, we've got a nine here. And this line is four lots of either seven or eight. So if it's four lots of eight, that's 32 plus nine is 41. That's a four. Um, don't tell me it's gonna be, this is gonna be an eight, isn't it? If it's, for, if it's seven, we get 28, 37, this is eight, yeah. Ah, four or eight into that position. So there is, there is definitely an eight in one of those squares. Well, it's just fairly obvious, actually. Now I think about it. Hmm. 
Oh, bobbins, I don't know what that does. <laughs> okay, um, let us... Oh, goodness me, I don't know what to do. Do I know? Ah, ah, I know what we do now. Look, 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 look. When a, There's a five in one of these squares by Sudoku. Well, that's interesting, isn't it, for this line? Because now there's a five on the left-hand side of this big thingy that adds up to nine. So that means there's a four over here. Uh. <laughs> that's oh, that's really annoying actually that doesn't act well what it does do is it does mean that there is a four in one of those positions which will have a five opposite it ah those squares they see a five this is a four eight pair something to do I think with a four being in one of these squares so it's going to have a five opposite it I'd love to I'd love to say the five has to be down here but it could be here and that would put a five in one of those which would make this a four five pair hmm Okay, I don't know how to do that. Um, okay, so maybe we've got to do this in the opposite way then. Maybe it's more important what digits can't go here. So if you can't put three here, you can't put six there. So six is in one of those squares. I think this is clutching at straws, to be honest. Can you put six on this line? I'm just thinking th six would need a three, wouldn't it? If that's... You definitely can't put six in any of those squares because they would need three there. But if you put six, it's very difficult, actually. I think there's only one. Oh, no, you, whoo, there was one way of doing it, but you can't do it there because that's a six. Ooh, this is this is it. This is it. Right. Where is... Although, is this actually going to... It's, I think this is doing something. Again, I can't quite... My brain is being slow today. Where is... Well, I don't think... This is the fundamental point. I don't think you can put six in any of those squares. That clearly can't be a six. If you put six in any of those other squares... It clearly can't go on the right-hand side of that two by two because you put a three on the left-hand side of it. And that will break with this three. So these are not six. You can't put a six there. That would be a three. And you can't put a six there because that would be a three. And that three sees it. So six is not in those squares. So six is in one of, exactly one of two places. Now, do we know that's not six now? Uh, the opposite one of that is that one, which now can't be two. Yeah, okay, where is 6 in this box? And by Sudoku, it's not there. And by the fact that there's a 3 here, looking at this square, it's not here. So 6 is in a domino. Oh, this is so frustrating. So 6, can 6 be here? This would be a 2. Hang on. So six is in one of three places in box four. I don't know. So 
Sorry, I don't know what that means. Um. <laughs> oh, bother. Right, okay, so we're going to have to think harder again. This is this is not easy. Even though even that after that break in, which was hard, it's definitely not easy, is it? These squares are either two six or one seven, because they have to add up to eight, and they can't use three. So actually, that's worth pencil marking. It looks like there's something. Try that's not six by Sudoku, so that's not two. So if there was a 2 here, this would be a 1-7 pair. That would make that would make this a 2-6 pair. And the other thought I was going to just dwell on for a moment is the fact that 7 couldn't be on the left-hand side of the thingy at the top. Um, so that means that 2 is not in one of those cells. That means 2 is in one of these cells. That's nearly very interesting. It's nearly knocks 2 off this line at the bottom. But it doesn't quite do it. The reason, uh, the reason for that is that if there is a 2 in one of these squares, there has to be a 2 in one of these squares. And that can't be a 2, because that would put 7 here. Where it can't go. But that could be a 2, if that's a 6. Hmm. Wow, okay. So there's definitely, <laughs> there's many points here that I am not understanding. Um, is it three in this box? We worked, yeah, okay. Where is three in this box? That's, that's an easier question. It's not there, because that would be a six, which would crack. So three is in a domino down here. So three, uh, three is in a triple here. Which is probably important. It's almost, uh, there's something going on here. Because, because although I have noted that because this is 7, I didn't put a 2 there. Actually, that it does extend to this fourth position, doesn't it? You, you can't put 2 in any of those cells in column 7. So the only place you can put 2, if it's not down here, is exactly there. So is there... Is there some equivalent logic that we can we can extract from that? I bet there is. Um, I say I, I say I bet there is. I don't really I don't really have any justification for saying that. Oh, if three is over here, then. This is, again, it's perverse logic. But if 3 is over there in box 3, then 6 can't be on the line here, can it? Because 6 would cause a 3 on the other side. So 6. 6 is in one of those 3. Ah, that's huge. That's, I've done it. Oh, look. Um, okay, so what I've thought is, because there's a 3 over here. Yeah, you can't put 6 there, because it would put a 3 over here by the zipper line. 6 can't be in those, so 6 is in one of these. 6 is now not there, which means this is a 1-7 pair. Which means this is a 2 or a 6. That knocks 6 out of... Well, its partner is there, so that is now not 2. So this is now a 1-7 pair. Wow, that digit has a friend in one of those squares, doesn't it? 
So by Sudoku, there is a 1 or a 7 in one of those squares. So these two squares are either 1, 8 now or 2, 7. 1, 8 or 2, 7. 1, 8 or 2, 7. Oh, now, because there's a 1 in one of these, and there is, oh, is, is there a 1 in one of those? Sorry, I can do this, because there's a 1 in one of, there's a 1 there, so that's 1, that's 7 by Sudoku. 7 is in one of those squares, but more importantly, surely, is that 1 is now in one of these squares, which means 8 is in one of these squares, which means 8 is on a line here, which it must go with a 1, Yeah, okay, oh, well, yes and no. Where is the 8 in this box? And the, I think the interesting point is it's not there, because that would be a 1. So 8 is in one of those squares, which which means the 1 is opposite it. So these, there's a 1, 8, either on blue or on yellow. That And that can't be 8, so that can't be 1. Now, it's close, isn't it? Uh, oh, 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 oh. Now, now, remember what we said about two at the top of this line. It can't go there because seven would be on the other side of it. So two is now locked down here. And that is a two, three, six triple. Now, that means... Ah, come on, brain, do some work, you silly, naughty brain. Two, three, six. Ah, uh, no, that was a bad thought. Well, four, eight, five must make an appearance up here. There must, by just by Sudoku on this column, there must be a five in one of those. So there must be a four in one of these, but I don't think I know anything about where it goes. And two being down here makes it harder to put set. Well, it makes it impossible to put seven. Oh, hang on. Am I running out of ways to make this work? If two is in these squares, and three and six are in these squares. Oh, I see, right. Okay, so what we have to, I think, think about now is the fact that seven is on this line and its opposite number is two. So you can't put seven in blue or yellow because then, then the two would appear in box nine with it. So that has to be seven. Sorry, that's been obvious, I'm sure, to most of you for ages. I didn't see it. I didn't think, of, now, to be fair, I just didn't think about it in the correct way. So now two lives up here. I've now, do, I've now done a bit better look in box. What about seven up here now? Oh, we can have seven, because these can include two. Oh, nearly. Very nearly. But also, we now know um, four and five have to be here, don't they? So these are now... Let's actually, let's, let's go to small numbers. These are one, eight, and four, five in some order. And that's not eight, so that's not one. Now surely we can do a bit better than that, although we don't seem to know enough about fours and fives. This is weird. And um, now I do know there's a five in one of those, and therefore I know there's a one in one of these. You see, what do, what what are the options here? Did we work out what was? What were the options for the? Oh, this was a four or an eight. If that's a four, this is a one-three pair. What does that do to the world? That would, 
that would clarify that this was a 3. There's, um, okay. There is always in this domino a 1 or a 2. Because if it's 4, it's a 1-3 pair. And if it's 8, it's either a 2-6 pair, which has a 2 in it, or a 1-7 pair, which has a 1 in it. So there is always a 1 or a 2 in this domino. Now, is that the same there, though? If that was not... This would be 4-5. That, <laughs> that doesn't work. Right. That's useful. That is useful. So what I've noticed is because there's a 1 or a 2 in this domino, I think the same is true of this domino. If I just highlight that domino for a moment, how could there not be a 1 and a 2 in it? A 1 or a 2, or both? Well, because there can't be both, because that would break this now. We know there's a 1 or a 2 in this domino. But if there's no 1 and no 2 in this domino, it's a 4 and a 5. But that means both of those squares have to be selected from 8 and 1 and they're not they're not in the same they're not in the right place that that would have to be 8 this would have to be 1 and they'll put another 1 in the box cuz we wouldn't be able to put 4 5 on either of these uh, lines so there is a 1 or a 2 in this there is a 1 or a 2 in this so that cannot be 2 that cannot be 1 and now there has to be an eight in one of these squares. And well, oh, no, this is a chocolate teapot. I thought I was, I thought I was proving more in this this triple, but I'm not. But the, here, because because this can't be a four five pair, because that would make both lines four five. There must be an eight here in one of these two positions, which means there must be a one in one of those positions. Don't tell me that doesn't do anything. Oh, I don't believe it. <laughs> uh, that's not an eight. We can say that with some clarity. Sorry, big interruption there. It happens more often at the weekend, but I actually had to go downstairs. Oh, we have a visitor. I had to have a cup of tea. So that's that's all been fine. Um, I have returned. Um, and I, as usual, whenever I get interrupted, I can't remember what I was doing. So I was doing something in the bottom right by the left. So let's go back. A, oh, OK. So I was doing something in the bottom middle as well. Uh, what was we were, why were we doing this we had worked out something apparently i got rid of two from this square why was that um i can't remember this is i find this very difficult when this happens um to just resurrect where my thoughts were let me just go back again so i started to color the dominoes and I got rid of two from this square. Yes, okay. Yes, okay. I've resurrected my, my mind. Okay, so what we did was we said that... Yeah, we said there must be a one or a two on here, didn't we? And there must be a one or a two on there. Now that part of it, I can't remember why we thought that. Yeah, that, uh, yeah, that's right. That is right. Because if that was 4, 5, this would be 8, 1, and the pairs wouldn't matter. That's very clever. Okay, <laughs> well done me. Okay, so that made us work that out, that we had... What do we do then? Okay, yes, we worked out 8 had to be in one of these. Uh, now, what... I, because we know that this is a one, two pair. So one is not here. Yeah, so one is in one of these. So eight is in one of these. Okay, this makes sense. This makes sense. And therefore, what? What does that mean? Sorry. Um, 
I haven't got a clue. Uh, <laughs> I know one of these is four or five. What? Yeah, okay, so one of these is one or two. One of these is one or two. So one of these is four or five, and one of these is four or five. So yeah, so between the, okay, let's, let's highlight those squares. So between these squares and these squares, there is a four, five, eight triple. So this square is presumably the one that's under the most pressure because that can't be one, two, four, five, eight, or nine. So that is only able to be, I want to say three, four, or seven. No, not four. We just said there was a four, five pair through. Uh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Is that right? Yeah, there's one of these is four or five, and then one of these is four or five. So this square is it's not one, two. It could be three. It's not four. It's not five. Oh, it could be six. Could it be six? Bother. Maybe it can be six, seven. So, okay, so these squares include 3, 6, and 7 in the row. But that doesn't tell us what's on this arrow, does it? Because they could still be 6, 7 if this is 1, 3. And if that's not 7, if that's not 7, there would be a 7 on the arrow. That would be useful. And can we still put 2, 6 on the arrow? If that's 2, 6... That would be three, and that would be seven. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, sorry. Um, um, sorry, I don't actually see how to do this line then. At least I don't think I do. Um, let's, let's check the logic that we were doing elsewhere. I do remember there was a five in one of these, wasn't there? And that was because there was a three in one of those. We should probably, should we pencil mark these digits? Do we know? We know this line adds up to nine. <laughs> um, we know that Okay, here's something we know. Oh, goodness, this is, this is probably important, actually. Where is 6 in this column? Um, and 6 can't go at the top, because that would put a 3 on this side. Yeah, I, I, so there must be a 6 in one of those two. Now, we might be able to do better than that, actually. Let me just think about that for a moment. So these squares are from, they aren't six or eight, if I trust my earlier pencil marks. Why did I think there was an eight in one of these? I can't, oh, that, yeah, that's probably right. I seem to have thought there was an eight up here. Um, I can't question everything I did before. So let's, let's assume the six and the eight pencil marks are right. That means effectively we've, we've narrowed down six of the digits in box four. We've got one, five, seven, nine, six, and eight. So these have to be from two, three, and four. And they are both on the line. So their counterparts have to be six, five, or four. And they are, oh, they're these squares, aren't they? So this, these is four, five, or six. One of these is a five. <laughs> um, goodness me. Okay, that that hasn't done anything actually. Uh, the, just to mention, the, the way I was th thinking about that was I was looking at those digits and noting that they were off this top line here. So the counterparts that add up to nine with these five digits must be in those five digits in column three, mustn't they? So the nines match off. That three matches with a six here because we can't put the three up there because it would obviously break, break it by putting a six up here. 
So there must be a 7 and a 2, which there are. There must be a 6 and a 3, a 3 and a 6. Uh, that's, yeah, so this is why the 6 is over here. And then the other digit is going to be whatever this, whatever the partner of this digit is, which is going to be, if this is a 1, then we obviously can't put 8 up here. So there would be an 8 exactly there. And if this is a 7, then we need the 2 to be in one of these squares. But it could be there. Ah, but not there. Ah, all right, so that digit is 6 or 8 for sure. Because either, I, let's just check that. If this is 1, I've got to put 8 in one of these and it has to be that one because apparently that can't be, I know that can't be 8 because that, that line adds up to 8, so that does make sense. But if that's 7, then one of these needs to be a 2, and that can't be a 2 by Sudoku, so that would be the 2, and that would knock the 6 downwards. So this is 6 or 8 only, and that means in this row, 4 and 5 are in these squares. Uh that's not five because we know there's a, this is getting complicated but there's definitely a five in one of those squares so that's not five so five is in these five is in those two squares four is in i see we actually we already knew all this already i just hadn't seen it this way from the middle box oh how infuriating oh dear oh dear oh dear so oh bobbins this is what well what am i meant to do then okay where is one in this column i can't put one in those squares i'm going to claim because that would put eight on the other side of the line and i know there's an eight in one of those two squares if i trust these earlier pencil marks now why did i think this before so i've put eight here I've put eight there and I've put eight in one of those two. No, that's real. That That is, I actually understand that. The reason eight is in one of these two squares is that is an eight. So I can't put eight on its own region sum or not its own zipper line. So eight is in one of those squares. So I definitely can't put one in one of those squares because that would put eight up there. Right. So where is one in this column? It is in one of those two squares. Now, if it's here, this is an, oh, if it's there, that's an eight. That makes sense. If it's if the one is there, that's a seven. These two squares are then one and eight. And that, oh, and that would be an eight and it works. Wow, oh, dear, oh, dear. I blame getting interrupted. I've, I, 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 we were doing all right. And now I've just got, uh, just hit an absolute brick wall. Um, no, I was, suddenly, I was trying to think, of, is there any digit that's restricted on this? Uh, well, without knowing, I mean, obviously, I mean, another way of seeing that that has to be a four if that's an eight is not even by maths, is it? If that's eight, where does four go on the zipper? It can't go on its own zipper because it would see a four opposite it on the zipper. So if that's eight, that's four. If that's seven, that's eight. But there's no... We know so little about what the digits are in yellow because of this... We will, well, we know three is in one of four places, but we don't know whether it's partnering up with a four or a five on the other side of the line. We don't know anything about fours and fives. Uh, it's probably this stuff that we were. Look I was looking at before I had my cup of tea. Let's go back to this again. What do what do we know about these these dominoes? We worked out. There was a one or a two here. Yeah, and that couldn't be four or five because that would break that. So there's a one or a two here. There's a one or a two here. And there's a four or a five here. And there's a four or a five there. And that gave us the pencil mark one. Oh, okay. Oh, that's obvious. Sorry, this is totally obvious. That can't be a four, because that makes that a five. 
and that breaks this. So, sorry, that's totally that's completely obvious. Um, if this yeah, if this is four, this is two because this has to add up to six. But that makes this a five, and that would make that a four-five pair, which it can't be. Sorry, that's um, so that one is not two now. All right, that is useful. That is that is useful. I'm, I'm actually cross about this because I would have got this before. Um, if, if this, because this is now the low digit that partners up with the one two that I've got in red here, that square is the high digit, the four or the five. So that's not two, because we know this can't be a one two pair without breaking this. Um, so this is four or five. So, uh, so this is now. A one two pair in the column. This is now a four five pair in the column. That means that square is not two, uh, which is on the zipper. So its equivalent is this one, which is now not six. Four five pair. Good grief, look at this. Four five pair there. That's That gives me a one here by the power of Doku. That's now. Uh, no, it's, it's on the blue line. That's eight. Okay, so this is now right. So this is now a four-five pair. That gives me a four-five pair. I think. Oh, that's not new news, is it? Uh, what about the one here, or the eight? The eight there does do something. That gets me that digit and that digit, and that does the bottom digits right. And if that's four, that's five. That's one. That's two. That's four. This is beautiful. Right. This is five by Sudoku. Now that by zipper gives me a three over here. Oh, this is gorgeous. Um, oh, no, this is even better than that. Oh, well, it's, oh, no, it's done a different way. If that's a two, look, that's not two six. So this has definitely got one on it. It still hasn't told us what that is, though. That's really weird. That is really weird. Uh, oh, hang on, this must be done now. <laughs> this must be done. Um, I'm sure it. I just can't see how it's done. All right, that's two or six by Sudoku. But we've just got loads of new information. So all we have to do, I think, is to use this new stuff that we've just learned in some sort of intelligent way. Because we got loads of... Well, yeah, look at these digits now. So those digits are four, six, and nine. That's not nine. That's a two or a four. Right, that one has lost its ability to be five now because that can't be three anymore because only one of those could be five. I suppose that was an interesting way we could have thought about that, but I didn't think of it that way. So five goes here apparently now. So that means five is in one of those two squares in this top box. Now, depending on what this is, if that, that five is either going to be opposite a two, so if that's five, oh no, this is horrible actually. <laughs> I don't really even want to pencil mark this because it leads to sort of a floating two or three, depending on which, which, which one of these is five and what that digit is. No, that's that's horrific. We're not going to look there um, unless we really do get very, very badly stuck. What about these squares then? That's four, six or eight, is it? Um, oh, no, come on, come on, Simon, don't be slow now. I'm sorry, I've got I've got bogged down again, haven't I? I'm absolutely sure I know how this bottom thing res uh, when I say I know, I mean I know my brain if it if it had the right thought could work out how to do this bottom bit. But my brain is being recalcitrant. Um can they? No, they can. I was wondering if whether there was a reason they couldn't be double four, for example. But no, they seem to be able to be. If they were double four, that would be eight. That would be seven. That would be something. Eight again. Uh, 
Okay, so it must be something. Oh, look, there's a 1 in one of those squares now. We probably have to pencil mark, in fact. Let's, let's get rid of all our detritus in box, box 3 and see what we can... 9 is in that domino, I've just noticed. See, things like that I hadn't been spotting. I know there's four or eight. Oh, that's useless. That's absolutely useless. So these digits, let's just pencil mark them. They are one, two, six, nine. That's not nine. That is not two or nine. That's one or six, apparently, only. So it's five in this box that's restricted five is in one of two places oh can that not be five for some no that can be five because that could be four so i definitely know that two and nine are up here so i definitely know that seven is not here, but I already knew that from Sudoku. All right, let's try this column. Uh, three, five, six, seven. And we can do better. That's not three by the power of this. So this is five, six, or seven. Whoa, 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 whoa. Come on, what's this doing? Five, six, seven. One, five, or seven here. So this square is its, a, its counterpart on this zipper. So that is 8, 2, or 4. Now, what can we rule out from this square? Oh, no. <laughs> um, I don't know. This is now, this is now getting... This is absolutely baffling how can this still be resisting we've basically filled in the bottom of the grid seven um or, oh well what i'll be missing i'm sure as you're shouting at me about it is is going to be sudoku isn't it there's going to be some sudoku jiggery pokery that i am um, how did we we got fives. I got five. This five up thing up here is not doing anything. I don't think it is. I need to know what that is. I really do. I got all of these beautiful digits. They were they were a kind present. Then I got. So. Th is there some colouring or something I need to do vis-a-vis -vis if that's two? No, that would be two, I think. That would be okay. Okay, I'm going to try the top of this column with, but without actually... Oh, there's a four. There's a four there. Oh, goodness me. Sorry, that's great. Thank goodness for that. So that's two. That's six. That's got to go with two. That's just me getting tired. <laughs> claiming excuses that's four that's five now um oh i'm so relieved though i couldn't see what to do at all now what does that mean that's a two right so this is now not two seven this is one eight which gives me six seven one seven this is no longer eight look so this is four and six i bet we can use the line thingy technical term for the zipper so that's a six to add up to eight that's a four that's a two that's a six three two now three has been finally knocked off this line so we now know that's eight because it can't be a one three pair uh, which means this is a, is now a one seven pair and that digit is now available to us as a six and this is going to get very exciting now because i reckon we're going to finish this this is a 3-4 pair, and then we know the order. So that's 4, that's 3. That is giving us, well, no, lots of things are giving us these digits. That 8 was doing it. That 7 now is doing these digits. And all of a sudden, we know what those digits are. And they are 4 and 5, I think. Well, it seems okay, doesn't it? And they've got to be opposite digits that add up 
2, 7. So that becomes 2 or 3. And that becomes 2 or 3. That gives us a 2, 3 pair in this row. So 3, 2. Ah. Uh, that can't be 7. And the other digits are 1 and 6, which presumably is resolved. So that's 6. That's 1. That's not 1. That's not 6. That's not 6. 7 comes out of those two squares because of Sudoku. 6 comes out of a few squares because of Sudoku. So we get 1, 2, 9, triple. 3, 5, 6, triple. And these squares must be 4, 8, 7. Uh, that's not 8. That's not 7. Um, this 8 and 1 is resolved, of course. Uh, that's a four in the corner at the top. So that's not four. We've got chocolate teapotted here. Okay, but we can we can pencil mark more things. Three, seven, eight here. Not seven, not eight. These squares are one, five, two. So that's not one. That's not two because of this two, three. I haven't, ah, yeah, two, three pair does the eight here. So that gives me the ch that does my chocolate teapot up here four eight seven. That does my seven. That does my three. Oh look, we're going to get a three in the corner. I could leave it till last actually. I leave it till last. Uh, or is that dangerous? It might be dangerous, but <laughs> let's live life on the edge. <laughs> um, now. How, how, come on, this, this this is done now. Just resolve, Simon. Come on. What's going on? Where's four in the top row? Oh, no, there's a four in the corner. That's four. That's five. Right, the zippers now must be useful. That must be two. That must be three. Which we I've just realised I could have done that by Sudoku. Dear, oh dear. Um, that's not five anymore. You can see the one, two pair that's emerged. What about this row? One, five, six, and nine. All seems to be possible, doesn't it? Two, five, six, nine. That's definitely not three. Let's get rid of the corner pencil mark here. I can see, obviously, that this is a three, but everything else should be resolved as well. <laughs> Please. Um, Oh, it's the zipper. <laughs> this is how tired I am now. Okay, it's the zipper, look. So that's got to add up to nine. So that's one, five, that's two. So that does nine, one, two, five, six, six, nine. And I've saved to last. That's three in the corner. That's three in the spotlight. Losing its religion. Is it correct? Let's click tick. Yes. Did I like the puzzle? Yes. Ah, oh, not many people have solved it. Look, 27 in 23 days. Not surprised. The break-in is hard, but it doesn't get much easier after that, at least not for me. It was beautiful. So many beautiful steps in that one. It's an incredibly clever puzzle to all ear, but it's, it's pretty difficult. At least, hmm. What could I have done better? No, I mean, it's difficult. It's difficult. You've got to get the break-in. And then you've got to do all the jiggery pokery, working out how these sort of liney things work. It was not easy to figure out how this line worked. It was not easy. To, no, that was where I made that. Well, no, it wasn't really my fault, I'm going to claim. But having to go downstairs was, was not an opportune thing. Because I was looking at this at the time. And I think I would have got. It was that digit, wasn't it, that was, uh, I should have spotted, well, I'd, if I'd looked at it, I did spot it a moment, in an instance, but it was, uh, I was distracted. And that helped at the bottom, yeah, that, because that did some stuff over there. Yeah, it's a, it's a magnificent puzzle, absolutely magnificent, Dorley, it just, just, it is five stars, that's, that's, there, I've said it. Let me know in the comments how you got on. I enjoy the comments, especially when they're kind. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.